Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're going to be doing another video about Belgium today. This one is uh, suggested by Wim, so shout out to you for that. The video is called This is Belgium. The original channel is Frank Gillis. Make sure you head on over there to the original video. You can find the link to that in the description section down below. Go to the original channel, hit like on his video, show that channel some love, and we're going to check out This is Belgium. I've done uh, This is Germany. I've done, I think this is Netherlands or something. So I'm assuming this is going to give you a little bit of the, you know, it says right here, like culture in the top. So culture, probably some drone shot footage, aerial views. I would assume it looks like when I, you know, kind of skip through um, the video. So yeah, let's check it out. Let's see what Belgium is all about, guys. I know there's some Belgian people watching this. So how's it going? Shout out to you. And uh, let's continue. Love your chocolate, by the way, and your beer. <laughs> Ooh, that looks cool. Yeah, so there's definitely some uh, fl uh, some spots that's not it's not so flat like Netherlands, right? So Belgium, a lot of culture is being shared with the Dutch, but uh, probably more south you go, I would assume, is when you start getting into the mountainous regions, uh, which looks amazing. I love nature. Like that'd be a great place to just go check out. Oh, it's a movie. Belgium, the movie. Nice. And it looks like, yep, 360p is what we get for quality. I guess I'll, on your guys' end, it won't look as blurry, though, because it is a little smaller, so, with the angled screen. All right. That's a pretty good river. I wonder what size, or what river that is, actually. It's a pretty good size one. They got birds. Who would have knew Belgium had birds, right, guys? And trees. I hope the entire video is not like this. I want to get some commentary or get some audio, get some information here. Like, is there going to be any? Is there going to be any voiceovers or any audio? Maybe this is just the whole intro. There's Belgium in the winter time. Man, I am sweating, guys. I'd I apologize. Like to tell you it's about hot a here. country that lies next to the North Sea, a country to which I seem to be very much attached, even if I am looking down on it quite literally <laughs> it's one of the world's most densely populated countries yet this is not evident from the air what is apparent though is an abundance of green why don't you come and join me on this flight all right let's join him guys on this flight of discovery or learning this country is called Belgium and it's very old the earliest trace of human presence found here, a primitive stone tool, dates back to prehistory, 800,000 years ago. Jeez. I'd say that's kind of old, yeah. 800,000 years, wow. Donna Man and shit. Almost. Well, no, what have we been here? About 100,000 years, I think. Pretty close to the beginning of it, though. Belgium, the OG humans over here. Okay, so there's a lot of nature in Belgium. It's not just beer, and it's not just chocolate, guys. They got trees and birds and shit. <laughs> Belgians. That's how the Roman Emperor and General Julius Caesar referred to the northern inhabitants of Gaul. After he had conquered their territory, though not without resistance, he started to build trade routes. These Roman roads are still evident to this day, such as the one that leads to Tongeren, the town of the legendary Ambiorix, who fought the Romans. I wonder if that was a Roman Thanks statue. Thanks to the roads the Romans built, international trade was able to flourish. You know, just in general, like roads in general, it's something that I find interesting because, you know, if you look at a map and, and, and even here in the United States, roads are older than the country that, you know, they started, it was paths, right? We have Native Americans here. Um, 
not so much anymore, you know, but of course they they flourished before the Europeans came here and kind of pushed them out, right? But they already had paths, they've already had villages and everything set up for thousands of years. And so people just keep using them because they're already there. And now, you know, eventually down the road that they they got paved and everything and now there's concrete over them and it's a road, but it's very interesting to think of like a lot of the paths here in America is older than the country itself. It's just very interesting. The same with Belgium, you know, like old back in the Roman days before Belgium was Belgium as it is today. And those roads and stuff is just so old that they just been continuously used for thousands of years. It's just very interesting to me. And I need to find a video or something that covers that sort of topic. That'd be cool. Later on, the Belgians became conquerors themselves. From Bouillon, they waged crusades against the Islamites who had conquered Jerusalem. Okay. Villages sprang up. From the 10th century on, some of these villages grew into beautiful cities with impressive church spires, such as Tournai and Malines. Yeah, I like the uh, European cityscapes like that. You know, all the all the roofs are like that cop, like that, like uh, what is that, a brick color? Like that burnt orange kind of brick, you know. Um, it's very cool looking. It's not something, you don't see that often here. We have like the, just the standard gray, to us the standard, the gray shingles. Um, kind of life li or lifeless looking, you know. Over there, there's more color. It's more vibrant. It stands out. That orange brick is contrasting against the green of the grass and the trees, so you get a nice contrast of colors, and it just looks more lively in general. Whereas over here, all the black and gray roofs just blend in. It just makes it look not interesting from above like it is over in Europe, you know. And that, that just looks phenomenal, the architecture. Liège, the largest city in the south of the country, developed along the River Meuse. River Meuse. That goes to France. I used to have a poster, and it was Barret, Barret, I can't even, Bières de la Meuse, right? And I think it's French, it translates to the Beers of the Meuse River. I guess there's a lot of breweries along the Meuse River in, in France. Might check into that. I might, I might actually get a video and uh, find something to do a reaction on that. That'd be cool. Haven't done anything on France yet. Maybe I should. I do a lot of Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, the Denmark. was built where the Sambre and Meuse meet. The fact that cities often developed along rivers was no coincidence. Thanks right. to shipping, they had become trade routes. Right, and water. You need water to survive. And, and yeah, of course, the shipping trade routes. Yep. The port cities of Antwerp and Ghent developed along the banks of the River Scheldt. It's a pretty populated looking place. Oh, wow. You got a castle right in the middle of town. You don't see that here. That is... That is cool. That is cool as shit. In the Man. early Middle Ages, Bruges was one of the most important cities in the world. Really? In the world? And in the 19th century, Liège was nicknamed the Fiery City thanks to its industrial activity, mainly in the steel and glass industries which flourished at the time. Okay. When? In the stage was nicknamed the and in the 19th century, Liège was nicknamed the Fiery City, thanks to its industrial activity, mainly in the steel and glass industries, which flourished at the time. Very cool courtyards in that building. That's medieval, probably. Belgium clearly has a very religious past, evident from its numerous church spires, as well as the number of abbeys. There's a lot of churches. These were not used just for praying, though. Beer and wonderful cheeses were made there, as they still are, but the abbeys were much more. They were also thriving centers of knowledge and literature. Beer. It's interesting because here in America, you know, it's like, 
I'm not a religious person. I don't go to church or anything, but you know, if you do go to church, you'll hear the preacher, they preach against beer. They, you know, it's bad and this and that. And everybody in the church like looks down on people if they drink and they're afraid to even enjoy a beer because they get judged by the other church members. And there's a stigma about how it's bad, even though in the Bible, Jesus drank wine, but, uh, somehow it's just evolved to that point of, it's just not something you do. Right. And then you go to Belgium and like the monks in the monasteries are brewing beer. Not only are they brewing beer, but they're brewing like the best beer to ever grace the planet earth. Come on now. We need to get it together in America. Oh, and Belgian beer is great from what I've tried. Lefe Brown, Lefe Some Blonde. Some mm. did not survive the French Revolution and were raised to the ground. Raised to the ground? Belgium boasts a staggering number of castles, most of which are sparkling gems that can only be viewed properly from the air. I love castles. I am now flying over the castle of Gasbeck with its magnificent Italian gardens. Italian gardens, huh? Castles were built in a variety of different periods and styles. They can be Renaissance palaces or medieval forts, and in most cases, they remain in excellent condition. I wonder if there was Italian people that were there, or was it just like inspired by the Italian style, the gardens that they were talking about? Because Italy doesn't border Belgium, so I don't know. But not all of the time. Yeah, some of them are just demolished for sure. They're doing something there. What is this? They got, what is this? It looks like solar panel set up or something right there. What is that? Hmm. And a flag, it looks like. The video is kind of blurry, it's hard to tell. Also, thank you guys for watching the video. You guys are amazing. I no, if you could, could not keep the channel going without um, you guys watching, so I do appreciate that. Keeps motivating me to do more videos. So share away, no, please. If you thought Chateau were only to be found along the Loire, you should definitely visit Belgium. Those gardens look insane. That is cool. That is really cool. And for sure, you got to look at it from above, like you said, because you're not going to, you wouldn't be able to see the beauty for what it is at eye level. I'm assuming for sure. I mean, I, I don't know. I've not been there, but I can't imagine how it would be easy to see at eye level. Not to see the patterns that's in, in the, the gardens. the wonderful rolling countryside of Brabant, along the linguistic border, a remarkable monument can be found in Waterloo. I've heard of this, the Battle of Waterloo. A lion on top of an artificial hill marks the spot where, in 1815, a coalition of European troops beat Napoleon's army. The vanquished Napoleon. French emperor was exiled to the island of St. Helena. Wars were simple in those days. This is something I want to check out at some point too, guys. Um, I want to do a, a, a deep dive into, we've already done the 80 years war. Um, I want to do the Napoleonic wars. That is something that seems pretty interesting. So I'm thinking about at some point, like I said, diving into the Napoleonic stuff and the Waterloo and, and, and stuff like that, that they're talking about. I keep hearing it mentioned. I don't know anything about it. I'm a dumb American. That's why I'm trying to do this learning journey. So yeah. The Dutch king, William I, who ruled the country at the time, had the monument erected in honor of his son, the Prince of Orange, 
who was wounded during the battle. And some orange, orange pride, right, Duchess? That's where it comes from. The lion. Now, the lion's supposed to be a symbol of the Netherlands, right? But at the time, this was ruled by the Netherlands. So is Belgium also a lion? Or Belgium has a whole different identity, and they just obviously kept it there because it's just an old monument. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if this is all dirt or if there's a structure under it. Brussels, 15 years on. In 1830, following an opera-inspired revolution against Dutch rule, the state of Belgium was established. It was to be a constitutional monarchy, with a king as head of state. The country is divided up into two main linguistic communities, one Dutch and one French. And there's a small minority that speaks German on the eastern section of Belgium. They do leave that out in a lot of videos, and I see it in the comments a lot. German is also spoken, just not as much. Although German is also spoken in a very small region. Exactly. In the second half of the 20th century, the state structure was overhauled, and Belgium was given a federal government. And a little golden statue on top of a spire. That's cool. Belgium's second king, Leopold II, wanted to make his mark on the country's history with splendid buildings, most of which can be found in Brussels. They date back to his time, and they rival those in any other major European city. Cool. Hey, that's cool. Is this red thing? That looks Asian. Grounds at the Castle of why is this? Why does this look Asian? That looks like it should be in China. Look at that. In his own grounds at the Castle of Larkin, he had beautiful greenhouses erected and started an impressive collection of exotic plants. Oh, very cool. What? That looks more modern. Very cool. For be I mean, for being so old and looking modern like that, that's... You don't see that much. Or at least here, I don't see it much. The Canal du Centre in Inno boasts four lift locks for shipping. Incredible 19th century constructions which UNESCO has placed on the World Heritage List. Really? The polders of West Flanders played a major role in world history, for it is there that hundreds of thousands of soldiers died in the trenches during the First World War. Oh, shit. It's not good. The charming city of Ypres was flattened, as were the surrounding villages. For the first time in history, poisonous gas, known as Ypres, was used in the battle. You know, I don't know anything about World War One either. To be fair, so maybe that's something I'm going to check into as well. So, okay, so this is, so Netherlands flooded their area on purpose during the Eight Years' War. So now you're saying Belgium also did during World War I, and that was the beginning of the end of the war. So they helped put a stop to things. That's very cool. I've never, again, I don't know anything about any of this. This is, this is really cool. I enjoy learning. If you enjoy learning as well, make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. Or else you're not going to be notified every time I uh, upload a video. You're just going to miss out. So if you want to make sure that you get them, hit that notification bell for sure. YouTube's weird. It doesn't show you everything. 
even from people you're subscribed to. There I don't are know. museums dotted around the whole of this region, and sections of the trenches, such as the so-called Trench of Death, have been preserved for future generations. Trench of Death. Wow, that's a that's a hell of a name. <laughs> I mean, look at it though. That's crazy looking. Looks like puzzle pieces, like in a lock or like a like a zipper or something. Very, very interesting. <laughs> Lock Another of death. Another image typical of this region are the military cemeteries with white headstones. The best known being Tyne Cot Cemetery in Passendale. Now this is World War One victims. I would assume. What the hell is that thing? Is that a drone? Doesn't look like an old drone. During the Second plan. World War II, tough battles were fought on Belgian soil. Right at the very end of this war, the Germans tried to turn the tide and launch their Ardennes offensive. In the Battle of Bastogne, the Allied forces managed to bring the German offensive to a standstill. However, there were more than 100,000 casualties on both sides. Damn. Yeah, war sucks. What the hell is this? As a token of gratitude to the Americans. It's a really cool uh, monument there. As a token of gratitude to the Americans who lost tens of thousands of troops there, Belgium had a war memorial built in Bastogne. Okay. Well, thank you guys. It's appreciated. 1958. The Second World War seemed to have been forgotten. Brussels held an impressive World Fair for which a unique monument was erected. The Atomium. Yeah. Reflecting mankind's optimistic view of future development. And that looks cool as hell. What was that? That's not the same mound as earlier. What? The south of the country owed its prosperity to heavy industry chiefly the coal industry in the region surrounding Charleroi. They got all those mountains, For a yeah. long time, the steel industry was a pillar of the economy in Wallonia, although economic activities in that area are now taking a different direction. Wallonia, yeah, that's the southern part. The French-speaking part, I believe. What is striking, certainly when the country is viewed from above, is the impressive infrastructure. Belgium boasts an incredibly dense network of motorways and railways. Yeah. The government is making every effort to divert freight traffic to canals as much as possible, for these are eminently well placed to establish perfect links with the ports, including foreign ports. The port of Antwerp is a world-ranking port, ranked fifth in the world, and an important artery of the Belgian economy. Nice. Container transport has been increasing for years, and docks and mooring places are still being added to this day. So that one's fifth. Rotterdam's uh, the number one port, and that's not far from here, obviously. Belgium's neighbors with uh, the Netherlands. So you got the, the biggest port and the fifth biggest port right there. Now, what about the second, third, and fourth? Is that also in that area, I wonder? In the major port of Zeebrugge, a growing number of cars are being loaded and unloaded. Belgium's unique lock lifts process thousands of ships every year. With the high-speed train, though, you can get to Paris or London in next to no time. Nice, I can't wait. I'm going to move to Europe one day. Southern Netherlands, so I'm right next to Belgium, right next to Germany. High speed rail so I can travel to Paris and wherever I want to be. It's going to be nice. I cannot wait. And the number of passengers at the National Airport of Zaventem continues to grow year on year. Well, yeah, there's more people every year. Population's getting bigger. And more and more Americans are starting to realize how messed up it is here. And this isn't the land of the free anymore. It might have been back in the day. But guess what? Europe passed us up. We spent all our money on war and 
more war and making military bases all in all these other countries so that we can like maintain power when war happens. Like it's just all this, nothing goes into our infrastructure. Um, whereas in Europe they've, after world war two, they've just built up their economy, built up their infrastructure, realized that, Hey, let's stop blowing each other up. Let's, let's just, you know, put back into our economy. And that's what they've been doing. They passed us up and we're over here starting to realize that shit ain't the way it's supposed, you know, shit ain't the way that it seems or like what we thought it was, you know, or what they teach us, or at least, you know, that the, the propaganda says this and that, and the idea of this freedom, it's, it's all false. And you realize, and a lot more Americans are realizing that, that Europe is actually more free than here. So that's probably leading to a lot more of the increase in traffic over there too, as well as the increase in population, of course, too. But yeah, uh, rant over, side tangent over, I guess, back to this. <laughs> Lemon cake, lemon cookies vape. Tastes, tastes delicious, guys. I quit smoking cigarettes. I know vaping ain't much better, but it's certainly better than smoking cigarettes, I, I believe. Where's this place at? I didn't know they had skyscrapers there. I thought European cities were more like against the skyscrapers so much. I mean, Rotterdam obviously has some, but. Huh. Ah. Oh yeah, that train's scooting. As I've said, this is a small and densely populated country with an extensive road network and lots of industry. Yet there's still a good deal left over for nature and agriculture. And opinion polls show that people want to keep it that way. Good. We need food. <laughs> I mean, it is important. In many places, this agricultural activity produces attractive landscapes. Tulips. Typical are the small, oddly shaped plots of land often in patterns that hark back to the Middle Ages. Yeah. I love when you see remnants of Middle Ages and stuff like that over in Europe. It's just, it's just awesome to me. I want to see it firsthand. I will one day. I just can't wait. Perhaps for the very reason that nature and greenery are threatened by economic activity, Concern about the environment has grown enormously. In recent years, the government has invested more and more in green areas, so that Belgium is now being given more protected nature reserves, many having been lost in the recent past. Very cool. The massive square bales. We do round ones here, I don't know. I mean, we do small square ones, but not big ones like that. Every Belgian is born with a brick in his stomach, the saying goes, and all the raw material for building can be found just under the surface. <laughs> okay. Born with a brick in their stomach. Heavy industry is mainly to be found above the surface. For example, this steel giant in the Ghent region. This is good news for the car assembly sector. Every year, our major manufacturers produce some one million cars. It's not only Zaventem that handles increasing numbers of passengers. Regional airports are also gaining ground. Hmm. Is that one big building right there? From the air, it's mainly the large businesses that are visible. But this country can thank numerous small and medium-sized enterprises for its prosperity, as these are where the majority of employees find jobs. Right. Oh, that almost looked like a painting for a second. 
I don't know why the colors or something that's crazy. And what do all these people get up to during the weekend? They drink all that Belgian beer. Well, if it's sunny, it seems that they all head for the coast, even though it's only 65 kilometers long. Wonder what that is in miles. We're gonna find out 65 kilometers in miles. Let's see here. I did something wrong here. Sixty five kilometers to miles. Forty miles. Not very long at all, actually. Forty miles but still is a good distance though. Forty Apparently, miles. It's not just the Caribbean that attracts cruise ships. Oh really? The southeast of the country also does its bit to draw the tourists. There's hardly a young Belgian who hasn't enjoyed a camping holiday in the Ardennes. Oh yeah. Nature's probably great in the southeast. <laughs> it's weird, the river spins around almost a circle. At the risk of repeating myself, I'm flying above some wind turbines. More evidence of growing environmental awareness. <laughs> Wonder what is he flying? Is it drone? Like drones and stuff? Drone footage? Or is he inside of like uh, aircraft? I wonder. Since Belgium has 18 universities and some 50 colleges of higher education, there must be quite a few bright sparks who are looking at how the environment can be reconciled with the economy, among other things. The this historic cool. town of Louvain hosts the country's oldest university, dating back as it does to the 15th century. Wow. I thought it was a castle. Very Since cool. Since Belgium has no fewer than eight university hospitals, universities and medicine go hand in hand. Wish the quality was better, it wasn't so fuzzy. Oh, that's the place that showed earlier, isn't it? Belgium's second king put that there, I think. Brussels is not only the capital of this country, but also of the whole of Europe in a way. For this is where the EU's largest decision-making bodies are based. Yeah, it's not the capital of Europe in general. Europe has a lot of countries that's not part of the European Union. It's the capital of the European Union. Not Europe. The European Union. And as if this was not enough, NATO also has its headquarters in Brussels. Didn't know that part. Belgians like to go cycling at the weekend. Yeah, it is very interesting, though, that they happen to be the capital of the European Union and evidently NATO as well. It's just, it's just crazy. It's, such, it's a small country. I mean, it really is it's a small country. And even if they don't actively participate, they like to watch cycle rallies, which are never far away. From early spring to late autumn, there are cycling races virtually every week. And they can See, the thing with the Belgium cycling culture and the Netherlands cycling culture, Netherlands do it for just commute, travel, getting around. Belgians do it for the fun of it, that just the, 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 the thrill of riding their cycles. And watch the main ones live on television. They definitely get into it though, huh? Small wonder that Belgium has produced so many cycling champions. now about to land. I've tried to give you a detailed description of this intriguing country, but of course, I've had to leave a lot out. 
Okay, so he is in an aircraft, and that's what we saw earlier. I wasn't quite sure what it, what it was. It was really small, and it was really blurry, so that is just a personal aircraft. So he's got a drone following him also, probably, unless he has a buddy in another one of those. A word of advice before we part. When you visit, you might notice that Belgians can be rather critical of their own country. But all <laughs> in all, they like living here. Because believe me, in the main, they know how to enjoy life. Yeah, what do they do in May? What does that mean? You gonna leave me? You gonna leave it like that? What do you guys do in May? Let me know. He just he just left it like that. What is going on in May, to where you know how to enjoy yourself? Anyways, um, links down below if you want to make your own suggestion as well. Um, if you want to support the channel, that's down there as well. Hit like, hit subscribe, have a super fun, awesome day, and I will see you in the next one. All right, take care.